Hello, in this video, we'll go over our impression making technique for complete dentures using PVS and green stick compound. We have our diagnostic casts, our custom trays, our hot water bath, a torch, our PVS impression material and green stick compound, waxing instruments, and a straight hand piece with its tools. First, we'll check the custom tray against the diagnostic cast. The custom tray was made to be two millimeters short of the depth of the vestibule on the cast. However, upon clinical inspection, we noticed that the tray is right up against the border tissues, especially in the frenum areas. These are areas to be marked with a Thompson stick marker and adjusted using our straight hand piece. Then we'll locate the vibrating line by asking the patient to say, ah. Oh. See that moving right there, we have the dot right here. And then on both hamular notches, we're gonna put there. I'm gonna connect those lines like that. Then we're going to seat the impression tray in so that the line marks on the tray. Now we can trim the tray to the right extension. Once the custom tray has been adjusted so that it provides two millimeters of clearance between the edge of the tray and the depth of the vestibule, we are ready to border mold. We're gonna go ahead and start heating up the green compound. We don't want it to burn, so we're gonna be moving it quickly over the flame. Eventually, it'll start getting shiny. When it does, we know it's about to bend. When it bends, we wanna make sure to keep it on the stick and not on the ground. So we're gonna to have to move it quickly to make sure gravity works in our favor. We're gonna roll it up into a little roll on our stick. That takes a little bit of practice. We're gonna make sure it's a little softer here. And once it's the right consistency, we're gonna go ahead and transfer that onto the posterior border area of the tray. I'm not really critical of how it looks like because I will be adjusting how it looks using the hot water bath. Uh, I usually set the hot water bath to the highest temperature I can. Then I dip my fingers really quick. I dip the actual green compound in there that is on the tray that softens it. And then I can mold it with my fingers using gentle tapping. I want to mold it into the shape of a ramp sloping upwards towards the soft palate. While the green compound is still soft, I'll go ahead and seat the tray and I'll ask the patient to say, ah. Ah. After we take it out, we notice a little bit of excess here. We can slice that off using a number 25 blade. We'll put it onto our blade handle and just slice it off while it's still warm. We're gonna go ahead and heat up another piece of green stick compound and apply it onto the distal buckle area of the tray. We're gonna mold it so that it would stick up a little higher than what we'd expect so that it would be adequately border molded. We need to watch out during tray insertion not to bend the green stick compound, then fully seat it and start border molding using our hands in a circular motion. Also going to instruct the patient to move their lower jaw left and right. Then we'll take out the tray, revealing the adequately border molded distal buckle area. Now we're going to go ahead and heat up another piece to be added onto the anterior buckle area. The custom tray is seated once more. To border mold the lip and adequately activate the frenum, I like to support the tray with my middle fingers and then using my thumb and my pointer finger, I border mold the lip. That way you adequately capture the depth of the vestibule and both frenums. The process is then repeated on the other side. Once we've been around the arch, I like to heat up the distal area of the tray and the distal buckle areas in the hot water bath and then seat them one last time, asking the patient to move their lower jaw left and right. That usually reinforces the posterior palatal seal and enhances retention. Now the border molding is complete and we're ready to make the final impression. But before we do that, we need to trim the inside of the green compound so that it is flush with the inside of the tray. This is done everywhere except the posterior palatal seal. We then apply adhesive to the tray and we are ready for the impression. I'll be using the medium viscosity impression material, applying it all along the border. And then I'll make my way on the inside in a spiral all the way to the central part of the tray. I try to cover every little bit of the tray with an even layer, and then we're ready for the final impression. I'll seat it, making sure to move it around to make sure it's fully seated. I'll also use that mouth mirror to remove any excess that seems to 
pop out of the palatal area and I'll just wipe it on the back of my hand as you see here. We will do the same border molding movements we've done during the green stick compound molding now in the final impression molding. Now here is our completed final impression. You can see some minor show throughs but overall adequate. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the excess at the back. I usually like to mark the posterior palatal seal area one more time by marking it with a Thompson stick marker and seating the completed final impression into the mouth to imprint the color onto the tray as such. Now, because they're both purple, we might need to augment that color a little bit more by going over the existing line with the Thompson stick marker. That way the lab knows where the posterior palatal seal is. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the mandibular tray where I'll again mark the areas that need adjusting, particularly the frenums and the border tissues. We're then going to heat up another piece of green stick compound just like as we did before, but this time we're going to apply two blobs onto the retromolar pad areas. We're going to heat them up and form two little pyramids in those areas. Then when we seat the tray, we're going to put pressure in the back and that makes an impression of the retromolar pad areas. Now we're going to heat up some more green stick compound and apply it onto the buckle area. We're going to go ahead and seat the tray one more time, this time border molding the buckle area, not hard, but just making sure there isn't any tissue trapped underneath the tray. We're going to go ahead and add in some more green stick compound onto the lingual vestibule area now. It's important to adequately contour it so that it looks kind of like what you'd expect it to look like. Seating the tray, make sure that the green compound does not fold over itself, and then ask the patient to stick their tongue forward and left and right, which border molds the lingual area of the impression. The contralateral side is completed. The green stick compound is trimmed on the inside, except for the retromolar pad areas and adhesives applied. The final impression is then completed using medium body impression material and the same border molding movements we've done in the border molding phase of the green stick compound. We'll try to make a video for each of the following steps, so we hope this one was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.